What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Chargers Weekly. Chris Harry here with you. We're two weeks out from the NFL draft. Bringing on in front of the pod, my bud, Will Brinson, CBS Sports senior writer. Will, we did this with Ryan. I think we were doing a, a mock draft exercise about a year ago, talking about Jeff Akuda and Isaiah Simmons and Justin Herbert. I think the Bolts made the right decision. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, um, you know, Wilson and I were both not extremely high on Justin Herbert. I mean, I will own this. Um, and it, and to be perfectly frank, I mean, I think like the Chargers weren't high enough on Justin Herbert either. Because, I mean, and, and I mean that in, in kind of a joking fashion, obviously, you know, Tom Telesco knew what he was doing because he took him where he did. But, you know, I mean, he didn't come in until Tyrod Taylor was out and nobody in their minds could know there's justin herbert didn't think justin herbert was gonna do what justin herbert did he it's incredible justin, wilson ryan wilson has said this on 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 my on the pick six podcast and it's it's a perfect way to describe it and this speaks to just what a home run justin herbert was you're hoping if you're the jacksonville jaguars that trevor lawrence is what justin herbert was last year like that's what you're hoping for and I, all credit to him because I, I i i wouldn't i was wrong on just like i didn't i didn't see i as my son likes to say i said i didn't see that coming um you know like <laughs> I, I didn't see it coming and I, I i do think it is um if you're a chargers fan you have to be excited because they they nailed it and i i, I think we talked about this last year but it felt it was almost like too obvious you know, the way that they approached the, it was like, they just had, was it Tyrod Taylor and who, who, else, who was on the rock? Easton stick. Easton stick. Yeah. It was yeah. Tyrod Taylor and Easton stick. It was like, all right, this is like, this is a, like, this is a draft, like uh, a deke, like a, you know, like in mighty ducks, like the triple deke. This is a draft, a draft deke by Tom Telesco to make everybody think he is taking a quarterback when he's, but, but it was just, it was, it was, it was hiding in plain sight. They were taking a quarterback right and they weren't afraid of it. And I think, it is it is gonna be fascinating over the course of history, Chris, to see not only just you know how Tua and how you know Justin Herbert go like how their careers unfold, but you know if you believe the reports, the Chargers were okay with either guy. Um, suffice to say, it ended up working out pretty well for him. It worked out pretty well, and they've spent the off season. Uh, working on protecting him, getting Corey Lindsley and Matt Filer and Ode Abushi across the offensive line, or really just a revamped offensive line. And I've hit number 13 so hard over the last month, Will. We've talked about is it going to be a tackle, is it a corner, a skill position player? I thought today it'd be a fun exercise to just go through the top 12 because that's going to dictate what the Chargers eventually do. And let's just start at the top. We know what Jacksonville's doing. We have a pretty good idea what the Jets are doing. Number three, I, I don't want to say it's where the draft starts because the, the 49ers are going to take a quarterback. We just don't know which one. Um, but I think that's the most intrigue right now. Who are the 49ers going to take? You hear Mac Jones, Mac Jones, Mac Jones. But we just talked offline. Wait a second. There are Justin Fields pro day. Trey Lance's pro day is coming up. I don't think the Niners are being 100% honest with the public. So I know this is a team, uh, a team podcast. So I don't want to dive too deep into the Vegas market, but I mean, I you know the NFL is the NFL is embracing it. Uh, you know, PGA Tour is building a, a freaking uh, sports book in Scottsdale, and it also like the you know the draft odds is a little like when you see NFL lines, that's indicative of what people expect to happen. I think that a lot of times with the draft markets, they're a little more reactive to the rumor mill because you don't, you don't know. And this is even more true, Chris, I think in, in 2021, because there's no combine, you know, these pro days are attended, but you know, there's, there's media there, you know, for at a lot of them, but I mean, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not talking to people around the league in the same way that you were, you know, two or three, two years ago, pre COVID. I mean, it's just different. And, and that, that is, that's a reality. And I think that's part of why this information, the, the way that it's been disseminated is very different than it has been in the past. As we're talking, Mac Jones is, is a heavy, heavy, heavy favorite, like minus 300 to, to be the third overall pick. Now I have this wild, uh, you know, harebrained theory, smoke, uh, smoke screen theory that, 
I've sort of come up with in the last 48 hours. And, and the more you talk to people, the more you're like, all right, maybe this isn't as wild as I thought. If you're Kyle Shanahan and you trade up to the number three overall pick and you do it, I, I mean, what, four or five weeks before the draft? Yes. It, what? It, 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 if you, let's say, you, let's say hypothetically, he loves Justin Fields, right? Hypothetically. If you trade up five weeks out of the draft, and you love Justin Fields and you want to take Justin Fields and you let everybody know you want Justin Fields, you know, who's going to start looking at Justin Fields, the team at number two, the New York football jets, who, win. who, by the way, are entirely staffed by Kyle Shanahan, former Kyle Shanahan assistants, Robert Sala, Mike LaFleur, Mike LaFleur has been coaching with Kyle Shanahan since 2014 when he joined the Cleveland Browns on Kyle Shanahan's staff when Kyle was the offensive coordinator. He followed him to Atlanta. He followed him to uh, San Francisco, I guess, after that. If that if the, yeah, that was the next landing spot. He's been with the guy for seven years. If Kyle Shanahan's like, man, I love Justin Fields, you know who's going to take a hard look at Justin Fields? Mike LaFleur and Robert Sala and Joe Douglas. So if you if you make the entire world believe that you love Mac Jones for two or three weeks and, the, and let the Jets fall in love with Zach Wilson and let the Jets trade away Sam Darnold, you know what the Jets don't have time to do? Fall in love with Justin Fields. Like it's over. They don't. It, it, and so maybe that's, maybe I've got my tenfold hat on, but and, and it could be Mac Jones. He fits, he fits what they want. But if you were going to, if you were going to come up with the best possible way to Kaiser Sose smoke screen, this number three overall pick and the trade up and to take Justin Fields and to keep the Jets off of Justin Fields, the 49ers just executed that. So I, I am I, I don't know if I'm crazy or if I, or if that's, or I don't know if I'm crazy or if I'm brilliant or both. I mean, it's it's one of the two, I think. Either way, we got the tape, and we'll check the tape on uh, on Friday after the <laughs> right, draft. Right, right. It, you could be 100% correct. So let's just say it is Fields for the sake of this conversation. Then it gets really interesting at four. It's like, are the Falcons going to pull the trigger on a quarterback, or are they going to get a guy like Kyle Pitts? That's when it's like, all right, when does the run on actual players outside of the quarterback position start? It could be with Atlanta. So I've been saying this for several weeks now, and I, I, I stand firmly by it. And the more, you know, everything you hear leading up to this draft, I think solidifies this. The Falcons would love to trade out. They, because if you look at their roster, they're not in great caps, uh, great cap situation. They don't have a ton of young talent. They need, more young players. I think they would love to trade down, but I also think the teams that would be interested in trading up and we're talking at this point, Carolina is out because they're in the same division, yeah. Denver, uh, New England and Washington, or I guess are the three biggest suitors. The cost to get up to four is too prohibitive for those teams to make a move up for a quarterback. And I think those teams are still waiting to see what Kyle Shanahan does. Cause you can't again, like if, if you, if now if, if Mac Jones, if Max Jones was like signed to a contract, then you can trade up to four for Justin Fields. Sure. But if you don't know what they're doing, you have to wait and see what happens at three. So I think the Falcons could still make a move on the clock. But I firmly believe if you look at Matt Ryan's contract, the restructure they did this offseason, he's not going anywhere for two years. They're not taking a $30 million dead cap charge in 2022 they're definitely not taking a $60 million dead cap charge this year. So I believe that, that what Arthur Smith wants to do is pile is, is win some games with Matt Ryan in the immediate future. And you know, what better way to do it than to lean into your strength and draft Kyle Pitts, the maybe the best player in this draft yeah. independent of position. So I think it's trade out or Kyle Pitts at four for the Falcons. And will, when you have a quarterback on a rookie deal, I mean, you, you can't have them, just wasting away on the bench for two, three years. I mean, that, that's, it's not how it works. You Trey, know, like Trey, George Trey, Trey Lance would be the one exception to that in, in, in the sense that if you don't think he's like, I, like, I don't think you can throw Trey Lance in an NFL offense. And, and now of course we said that about Justin Herbert's, so, I mean, who, who the hell knows, but you know, like I, I think with Trey Lance, just, I mean, the dude's played one game, one exhibition FCS game over the last like 350 days. So I think yeah. that would be the one exception, but I agree with you completely. You cannot that's waste two years of a rookie contract on, on a guy sitting on the bench. Yeah. That's kind of the role of the dice there with, with Lance, especially he hadn't played, you know, football in a year plus. I mean, that's something you have to consider. Listen at five Cincinnati, you could go offensive line. You probably should go offensive line, but you know, if, if Pitts is off the board, Jabbar Chase is on the board. Uh, what do you do there if you're Cincinnati? 
I think this is really fascinating because you, um, you know, the old Ace Ventura, and, and I know we're not talking about the Dolphins, but the old Ace Ventura quote, it's like, to they're seek, up next. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But it's like, it's like, it's like, if you want to, if it was, if you want to be the dolphin, you have to sink like the dolphin, right? If you want to be the bingle, you got to think like the bingle. And it, it's a weird feeling to think like Mike Brown, but you basically have to transform yourself to an old cheap person, like a, like a really like old, old cheap guy. And that's what Mike Brown is. And that front office runs like Mike Brown wants it to run. And so you, so here are the two questions you have to ask yourself about the Bengals. One, do they, are they going to acquiesce to their quarterback's demands? Because Joe Burrow wants them to draft Jamar Chase. It's not really demands. Like he, but he's like, listen, man, did you see He'd what I Jamar- prefer it? Oh, yes, I would like, he's like, listen, I, I, Jamar Chase and I played together. If he's there at five, and did you see what we did at LSU? Because, you know, you should draft him. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd are great players. Um, but, you know, I don't know that either one is necessarily a true alpha receiver. And the three of those dudes would, would wreck shot with Joe Burrow. Um, the, uh, the two conflicting thoughts, I think, for that front office are, one, we drafted Jonah Williams with a first-round pick. We believed he was a first-round left tackle. Are we giving up on him yet? And then, two, we ha- do have two really good receivers, and we got them in the second round. So it, it kind of comes down to, like, like how, do the, how does that front office weigh that and then factor yeah. in the Joe Burrow thing? I ultimately think that they will go with Jamar Chase at five, but Panay Sewell would not be surprising at all. So then we go to Miami. If Chase and Pitts are off the board, that gets really interesting because mm-hmm. you want to get a weapon for Tua. Do you take one of these Alabama receivers who – have talked about preferring Mac Jones as their quarterback over <laughs> to it. That'd be an interesting uh, conversation in the locker room. Will. So I, I think that Miami only made the trade with San Francisco because they had the trade with Philadelphia in the bag. And if you're, if you're Chris Greer and you're uh, Brian Flores, you do this trade and you know that you go to six and you know that when you trade with San Francisco, like ipso facto, three quarterbacks are coming off the board first, right? One, two, yeah. and three. That means that at six, you are guaranteed one of three players. That's just sort of how the math works. And I think they have decided that they are fine with Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, and Panay Sewell. And I know that they took uh, Austin Jackson in the first round last year, and they have plenty of young players, I guess, in terms of talent on the offensive line. But I think they're just, they've sold themselves on those three players. Like this is, it's it, like in a fantasy football draft. You don't, you know, I don't want to be first. I want to be X. I find three or like three or four players I'm happy with as my top pick or any real draft. And then, you know, you have better value coming back the other way. So yeah. I think th- they're basically like, listen, we're going to let the Falcons and the Bengals decide who we're going to take. And, and we don't really care because we picked up an extra first round pick for it. And they're happy with whatever, whatever one of those three players that are left. It wouldn't shock me if they went to Vontae Smith or Jalen Waddle. But I, I do think that Mac Jones thing, you know, that, I mean, that's kind of weird. Right. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> like they're like, yeah, Mac Jones is better than it. It's like, oh, we can't trap this guy. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And so in, in this scenario, soul would be off the board either at five or six. And, and yep. obviously, you know, I, I, I think I think four, five, and six are Chase, Pitts, and Sewell in some kind of in some order. order. Yeah. So we go to Detroit. They got Jared Goff. They said they're not thinking in terms of hey, we may, we're not going to draft a quarterback. I you have so many needs in Detroit. You pick it. You know, it's like who is it? It's seven. Yeah. That's kind of the ultimate wild card here in the top ten. Yeah. I I the question of what they will do are are they going to? I don't think they should draft a quarterback. They have too many other needs. And Jared Goff Agreed. is same deal with Matt Ryan. Like, look at the con- – follow the money. Look at the contract. He's not going anywhere for two years. I mean, if they drafted you know, somebody and they, and they needed to cut Goff, he could be a post-June 1 cut after 2021, and it, it would be like a $20 million dead cap hit. But, you, you know, you make that trade with the Rams and you build out this front office and this roster, you lo- or you look at the roster and this front office plans for the build-out – in a way that I don't think involves taking a young quarterback now. I mean, they 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 made that Stafford trade being realistic about where they are from a roster perspective, I, I hope. And yeah. if you're being realistic right. about it, you have to realize that taking it, like if you tra- take Trey Lance and drop him into the starting job of this Lions team, it's going to get ugly. And I think Justin Fields would apply there too. So, or even Mac Jones would apply. So I think 
this is a team that goes best player available unless there's some buzz that Carolina might still go quarterback despite the Sam Darnold stuff and they trade back with Denver, New England, whoever it is. So I, I, I think, I think it's, I think it's a Jalen Waddle or Devonte Smith situation, but I wouldn't be shocked by, like you said, I- anything. I mean, I, maybe too early for a defensive player, you know, you could pair um, Sertan, uh, Patrick Sertan to, um, by the way, how about Sertan and Asante Samuel, both having kids and, this draft class it's depressing it's, it's, it's so wild dude it, like Br- brady brady played with samuel right he yeah. played against sertan for sure played against sertan and then did a he played against winfield too yeah absolutely yeah oh yeah for sure <laughs> it's yeah, unbelievable yeah. It's unbe- yeah i mean yeah and i mean yeah antoine winfield antoine winfield jr is gonna like have a son in the league who's going to play against Brady. That's yeah. how, like, that's how long. Antoine Winfield Jr. helped Tom Brady win a Super Bowl. That's just, that's, that's a wild thought. It's crazy. So, but, but yeah, to your point, like, I think it's maybe one of the Bama receivers, whoever you prefer. Cause I mean, they have tired. I, I heard, um, uh, Ben Solak of the draft network was on a podcast, uh, the deep dive podcast with, with a couple of buddies of mine. And he made a good point. If you look at what the Lions did in free agency, they, you know, they Tyrell Williams and Prashad Perryman ain't it. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's not the answer, but it's you, you sign those guys in the event that you can't draft a wide receiver because you can't go into the year with Quintez Cephas as your number one. That's just not going to work. So it does feel like trade down or wide receiver, but I, I think an offensive lineman or a, or a defensive player would be not shocking here at all. So Carolina, we talked about the Darnold situation. Carolina, Denver, both are very interesting. I, I don't think a quarterback's going to Carolina. You never know. Denver, it seems like George Payton is down to make a deal if if need be to fix. That's the one position on that team that they need to fix to contend because the defense like, they did some, they did some let nice me, let things. Me, let me ask you this: If you took Justin Herbert and put him on Denver. I mean, aren't you looking at this roster and thinking, man, like, like they might give the Chiefs a little scare. And I, I'm not, because I think the Chargers can give the Chiefs a little scare this year. Um, just because of the def- like the defensive roster, I have a belief in Brandon Staley and is given what he, you know, I, I don't, I don't know Brandon Staley from Adam. And I mean, he ain't got a long resume as a, you know, as a, as a you know, he, like he's not, he's not Wade Phillips. Right. But I mean, he, you know, in terms of the resume, but what a job he did with that, with that. Rams I tell you, defense. man, we're going to talk about Staley because he, his, his opening press conference was 96 minutes. He spoke to the media for an hour uh, last week. His energy is infectious. Um, he thinks differently. Uh, he, he thinks differently. He, he played quarterback. So he's a defensive coach who can think like a quarterback, mm. which I think is really going to be interesting with Justin. So we'll get to Staley, but yeah, I, sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to derail it, but the, no, like, not at all. I mean, the point being is like, if you tossed, if you tossed Herbert on Denver, I mean, I think you're talking about, it, I, there would be people in the media picking Denver to win the division. Dude, if if yeah. they had a, if they had a quarterback that you believed in. You got Judy, Cortland Sutton, no, I mean, the weapons, you got Gordon in the backfield who the Chargers know, they, they short up the defense, they got Kyle Fuller, I mean, they have to be thinking about quarterback, it's just a matter of, do, do they love whoever's on the board at nine, or yes. if they're in a position to trade up a couple of spots, if Justin Fields is there, that could be very interesting. I think, I think, so I think Denver is sort of the sloppy seconds for the 49ers. Like if they, why wouldn't you take Justin Fields or Mac Jones? I know. I mean, if, if we're fine at Mac with Mac Jones at three to the 49ers, why aren't we fine with Mac Jones at nine to, to Denver? I mean, you, you know, a, a smart decision. He's the antithesis of Drew Locke, really. Like, you know, Locke is like, oh, like flashy arm, you know, makes mistakes, a little far to him. Like, there's no far to Mac Jones. You know, like he ain't like he doesn't make mistakes. He makes the right decision. He makes the right reads. He's really accurate. You could put him in this sort of ball control offense where he works, you know, like I I think Mac Jones or Justin Fields makes a lot of sense here. I have trouble as I like Trey Lance, but I have trouble imagining this Trey Lance, Drew Locke. Like it's like, oh, like I think Trey Lance is too early for Denver in terms of where they are as a team. Exactly. 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 So 
I wouldn't, you know, I don't think they're taking a receiver here. I, I would be perfectly fine. You know, if they loved, uh, let, let's say the Panthers take Slater, um, which I think is, I think the Panthers are going to take Slater or Darisol, whoever they like best. I just think that's where they are in their progression in terms of this off season. Um, I, you know, Denver could take a cornerback for sure, but I, I think they are, I, it feels like they could, take a quarterback here if one of those two guys falls to them which then leads us to the nfc east the three the three teams in front of the chargers the cowboys and and, and by the way we don't in this i guess we're doing a mock right now which we're doing like we're doing a very loose mock it's like a loose it's like a a mock here it's like if uh widespread panic had a mock it's like we're sort of a jam mock but the (laughs) like we don't have a defensive player off the board yet no no. So, so, okay. Mac Jones seems to be the, the one player here who, if, if Atlanta takes, that's an extra quarterback, hundred um, percent. It's just a matter. I think, well, if four or five quarterbacks are going to be off the board before the Chargers select the 13, I think, I think four is a, four is a mortal lock. Four is a lock. I think four, four, is, a four, four is a lock. Right. So then we get, we go to Dallas, the giants and Philly. It seems like you hear these reports that that uh, Dallas is infatuated with Pitts. He's he's not getting to ten unless they make a move. Uh, corner they need. Th- this is where you know you, you got Farley, Horn, and, and Sertan probably all on the board here, and it's just a matter of what your preference is, I guess, at this point. Yeah, I'll I'll say this. I don't know that. Like, uh, let me look at. Have the Cowboys? Have the Cowboys taken? a secondary player in the last i i mean i don't byron think, jones i remember was that late byron, in the first that's a good call yeah byron jones in 2015 that is the only oh no they took maurice claiborne in 2012 all right so they've taken two guys since 2012 in terms of in terms of defensive backs but i mean like not typically and, and they traded up for claiborne who they, they really liked in that draft that was a disaster decision but that whole draft was weird um I, I think it's I, th- I so I think it's cornerback or pass rusher here for Dallas. I I, I get that they love uh, Kyle Pitts. Look, everyone loves Kyle Pitts. Yeah. You know, like like I mean, who doesn't? It, when in doubt, draft Kyle Pitts. I mean, that's a good draft strategy, but it's it's not going to help you at ten. Um, I I think it's a defensive player here, and if you're Dallas, you have to look at what. Although I would, it wouldn't be crazy if they took an offensive lineman, but I think given they this is a Dallas team that just paid Dak a lot of money, they want to win. And they want to win now. They have three good wide receivers. You know, there'll be a decision to be made this off next offseason about Gallup versus Cooper and and which direction they want to go there. But they have to feel good about where their offense is. Defensively, they can't feel good. So I think this is a, a decision of pass rusher or cornerback. And if I'm Dallas, I, I look at the available pass rushers and don't see a ton like a blue chip guy. So yeah, I go. There's not, I, there's not a guy that stands out, Will. Yeah, so I go. I think it's Sertan or Horn for them at, at ten. Giants of Philly, the Giants could do anything. I, I think they could continue to bolster the offensive line there. And you mentioned Dallas. Listen, I think Tyron Smith is thirty, but he's he's got a lot of miles on him. So I, I don't think you rule out offensive line for Dallas, but but I do think that they lean defense and corner. Um, the Giants, who knows, man? If Waddle's on the board, do you get Jones another weapon? Um, do you go defense? Do you continue to bolster the O-line? And then Philly, your guess is as good as mine. They, they, they've got a lot of holes. So I have a really good – like, I don't have many talents, but one of my talents, as he says completely out of focus, is that I am somehow able to identify exactly who Dave Gettleman is going to draft. And maybe it's because I don't – like. I Dave Gettleman is very obvious. He doesn't make any bones about it. And I think this offseason has been so abundantly clear how Dave Gettleman was going to play things. He is leaning into he understands that his job's on the line. Like the Giants need to win and his players need to be successful. This is a make or break year for Daniel Jones. Like look at what he did with with um, you know, uh with freaking uh oh god, what's it? Uh, I'm forgetting the, the uh Lar- Lawrence. Um not Lawrence. Williams, Leonard Williams. How am I forgetting? Williams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he, 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 good money after bad, and he doesn't care. He's throwing good money after bad all day long, and he's going to do the same thing with Daniel Jones. He's going to invest. In this this pick is one hundred percent guaranteed to be either an offensive lineman or a wide receiver. 
He is going to do everything in his power to it, to help out Daniel Jones. You know, I think that it's, a, I think wide receivers in play if it's Smith or Waddle. Yeah. But if Dar if Darisol in this situation, is Darisol still there? I, I think we have Darisol probably still on the board in this loose mock draft. Carolina, Carolina was going to take Slater. Darisol, Slater Carolina goes, yeah. Carolina goes Slater. If, if one of the, if, if one of Sewell, Slater or Darisol is there, that's Dave Gettleman's pick. He loves, he loves the hog mollies. They have Andrew Thomas at left tackle who played really well. They need more depth. I'll, I'll, you know, I guess they have Solder who then kick over to the right side. So it's it's either it's either tackle or wide receiver for him. I think well, it, it's just let's not uh, Elijah Vera Tucker from USC. It, a lot sure, of people have yeah. him in that conversation. I think David Jeremiah said he could he projects as like an all pro guard. Uh, he kicked out to tackle for USC. I mean, that's a guy who has that versatility that the Giants okay. need. Frankly. Okay, all right. Now 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 we're now we're cooking because it's a guy who you can picture the Dave Gettleman like press conference. He's like, this guy is, you can, you can see him. And it, you know, we know he can play tackle, but he kicks inside. Now we'll move him all around. Very, you know, like, yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's go Elijah Vera Tucker here for the giants. And that makes a lot of sense. Cause, cause it's, it fits Dave Gettleman's desire to draft a, a big body guy, but also plays into the, the quote unquote need factor where he slides him inside. And, you know, you still have Solder on the, you know, Solder on the roster. You can play him at right tackle Thomas on the left side, Hernandez, um, on the left with Thomas and, and all of a sudden he's talked himself into building up this great offensive line. They sign Galladay. They bring in John Ross. It, I, it, it, all right. I see the wheels turning. I like this. I love this working mock draft. It's just, it's an on the fly mock right. draft situation. It's right a living, now. it's a living document. <laughs> it is. All right. Before we get to the chargers, the, the Eagles, dude, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what the Eagles are going to do. Uh, they could, they could get a quarterback. I, I think, I think, uh, no, I, I think I think Lurie wants him to test out um, Jalen Hurts and see and see what he can do. I, re I really believe that. And I also think that, look, Howie Roseman survived whatever the hell happened in, in Philly. I mean, you read that athletic article by um, Shield Capedia and, the, and those guys and you're like, man, this is this is messed up. And Howie Roseman survived it. Howie, un I think, has to understand how mad fans are with him for taking Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson and for taking JJ Arcega Whiteside over DK Metcalf, which were it, like, those are, it's not like that's hindsight picks. I mean, those were pretty like pretty obvious choices for the top wide receiver available at the time. And so I think if Waddle or Smith are there for 12, they will seriously entertain it because it would appease fans and it would bolster Smith, uh, hurts a bill hurts in, in 2021. So I, I think it's a Bama wide receiver at 12 for them. And I think they traded down knowing one of those guys will be there. So we get to the chargers. Uh, I think if, if I remember correctly, Sewell's off the board, Slater's off the board. We took Vera Tucker off the board. That leaves us with JC Horn, who I like a lot, who I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, JC Horn football yep. down in the, uh, South Carolina, uh, Caleb Farley. So, so if, if I, if I understand this correctly, we are now back to the same question you've asked 400 yes. times this off season. <laughs> yes. Do we go, do we go, is it offensive tackle or quarterback? That's, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's what we're working with here because we got, we got wide receivers off the board. Like I just, you know, I heard Brandon Staley talk about the wide receivers. I, I got to see some of these young guys that the chargers have. I mean, we know about Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, Jalen Guyton and Tyron Johnson, those mm. guys are speedsters. They're undrafted Guy free agents. What was Guyton's yards per catch last year? Like 42 and a half or something? I mean, insane. Ty Tyron Johnson, his first five catches in the NFL, four of them went for 50 or more yards. And then Jalen cool. Guyton, 70 plus yard touchdowns. I think he had two of them. So Okay, he actually he actually did average. Jalen Guyton averaged, this is insane, 31.9 yards per catch last year. I mean, what, are we, what, are we, what the hell? That's insane. It's, it's unbelievable. So, so, so you got Guyton and Johnson, you got Speedsters, you got Mike Williams, who I'm really excited about this year, and then Keenan Allen. Do you need another weapon if you want to maybe try to outscore Kansas City? Possibly. Or do you get that guy like J.C. Horn who could shut down one side of the field? You get Derwin James back. Um, that Russian cover worked together with Bosa in a, in a shutdown corner and Derwin kind of flying around everywhere. Or 
do you fill that that hole at left tackle with, with a guy like Christian Darrisaw? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's it it really is it's a tough question, and I think I think that they'll probably go best player available. I don't think they take a wide receiver here. You know, yeah. this everything you hear when you look at the class one, and then what you hear from people around the league is that you know, this is a really deep wide receiver class. It's a really talented wide receiver class. They're going to be really good players available in the second and third round at wide receiver. And you're not drafting like, look, if, you know, if again, it's back to the Kyle Pitts thing, like if Jamar chase falls to 13, you know, the chargers will take him because they're not idiots. I mean, you know, you yeah, like yeah. if, if there's somebody that you believe is a, a true elite, you know, Number one, I mean, like if Devonte Smith there, maybe they take him too. I just think, you know, it's like the quarterback discussion we had. You don't, you don't draft, you know, Rondell Moore at thirteen to play fifty percent of the snaps next year behind Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Now injuries happen. You need depth. It's very important. But I, 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 I think you're on it when you when you look at how their confidence level at the at the weapons there. They could take one. It wouldn't surprise me. But you're talking about making, you know. Justin Herbert better, you know, tackles, a, that's an important position. Herbert's got great mobility, but you want to protect him. I mean, look at what happened to Joe Burrow with the bad offensive line. So I, I thought the Corey Lindsley signing, maybe my favorite free agent signing of the entire off season. It's great signing. It's great Huge. signing. Like you, you just, do you know, I mean, Justin Herbert looks and plays a lot like Aaron Rodgers, and you just went and got Aaron Rodgers longtime center and, you know, who's a, a veteran who's smart and you're going to help, help him develop like that. I think that's an underrated move in terms of growth and development for a young quarterback is getting them a center, you know, some like, I mean, look, his hands in his butt, like 70, you know, 60% of the year, like you're pretty close with your center. Right. I, mean, I think people don't talk about that. I mean, like you, you need, that's an important part and an important aspect of the development of a young quarterback. So you do that and, and then you can go out and get here. You get a stud left tackle. If you want, I would go Darisol here instead of JC Horn, but I don't wouldn't begrudge the chargers for, for either one of those moves. And keep in mind too, you know, we didn't take trades into account. The chargers have nine selections in this draft. If they're really in love with somebody, they may have the ammunition to move up or frankly, if, they think they can wait. Maybe they move back, you know, so it's, it's an interesting spot to be in because of everything we talked about. At, you would, at you top. would, you would know this better than me. And I, and I could be dead wrong on this. Has, has Tom Telesco ever traded? Has he ever moved? A f he, so they, his moved first, in, first round, he moved into the first round last year to get Kenneth Murray. So, oh, right, right, right. All right, so, right. So they got they got Herbert and then they moved in to get Murray. Okay, but I'm, but this is this, this is my question. Has he ever moved around his initial first round pick? I feel like the answer is no, but I could I have to, I had you know what? You stumped me because I don't know if if in 2013, 2014. So I don't know. I have to I right. have to check. I'll put this on Twitter afterwards. Okay, so I know that they they didn't move for Herbert, they didn't move for Tillery, right? Did they move for Tillery? No, 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 no. They stayed. They didn't move for Derwin because there was a steal of the draft. It was like, what is he doing yeah. there at seventeen? They've they stood didn't. pat. I know since. I mean, they stood pat for Bosa. Well, did they stay? Did they move for Melvin Gordon? No, they stood. They sat that's, for Gordon. That's the one. That's the one year. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I have to. I have to check. Okay. I mean, I, and I wasn't trying to put you on the spot because I didn't know the answer. But I, I feel like I, I feel like it's sort of people don't talk about this enough. Like Tom Telesco doesn't and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I feel like he doesn't move in that first round. Like, I think he sort of builds his big board and it's like, all right, I know how this is going to play out. And I think this is a prime spot for it, too. Now, if they get a, you know, if Trey Lance is on the board and Washington offers him some kind of crazy deal to move back to 19, I think given how this is sort of playing out, that he'd be willing to do it because of the depth that the positions are looking at. But I, I, I think this is a uh, to me, it's a it's a good spot if you're Los Angeles, if you're the Chargers sit and to, pick like and we talked about this a little bit before the before the pod, like 2017. Mike Williams is actually Mike Williams is one of the guys, Mike Williams, John Ross, Christian McCaffrey, Leonard Fournette. Um, there's one more guy that I'm forgetting about. Uh, Saquon Barkley goes early. All these running backs and wide receivers came off the board really early and it pushed a bunch of good defensive players. Like I know Hassan Reddick didn't work out for the Cardinals, but Hassan Reddick, Derek Barnett, who's, you know, 
played really well for the Eagles. Um, and then Marshawn Lattimore is an all pro cornerback. All those yep. guys fell down the board. In fact, some of the like Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson fell. Um, and so I think there's some of that happening in this draft with the quarterbacks up top. And then with these often, like just because of the way that need and the skill level of these certain positions works out in this draft, offensive linemen and wide receivers are going to push these defensive players down. Like we, we don't have a defensive player going until 10. So if you're sitting See, at 13, you're get if you're sitting at 13, you're getting one of the three best defensive players in the draft gear, almost guaranteed in this situation. And so I, and in worst case, you take an offensive lineman. So I, I think this is one where if you're in the 10 to 15 range or 10 to 14 range, New England's a wild card. You're feeling like, all right, let's just sit here. Let's let's get on, let's get on the let's let people get on the clock, see what kind of crazy stuff happens and just see who might fall to us. Yeah. And maybe just take your guy, the guy that you wanted from 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 jump. And you know, it, I'll get you out of here. I've kept you a lot much longer than, than I no, said I, I was care. going to, but it, let's say JC Horn is there. I, you know, Brandon Staley in his work with a lot of defensive players, uh, he talked about the the track record of success that he's had with with DBs and, and edge guys. Uh, I, I'm just envisioning a, a secondary with, let's say it's JC Horn and Derwin James and Mike Davis, who they they brought back in free agency on the other side. And then a, a healthy Joey Bosa. This is the thing, Will, I, and fans have heard me say this probably ad nauseum, but Joey Bosa and Darwin James have not been on the field together 100%. Like, it's I, just, oh, it hasn't yeah. happened. It has, I mean, 2018, when Darwin was the first team all pros, a rookie, Joey was out for the first 11 weeks, wasn't 100% at the end of the year. You know, he's working his way back from an injury. Uh, the next year, Darwin's out for the first 11 games. Joey has this big year. Derwin comes back. It's too late. Uh, they're out of the playoff hunt. And then last year, Derwin missed all of all of 2020. So I just I want to see Joey Bosa and Derwin James healthy. And if you can add a piece like a J.C. Horn or a Caleb Farley or a Patrick Sertan um, or even a guy in the second round, I, I, I'm just I'm really excited to see what this defense looks like. And I'll get you out here on this. You know, Kenneth Murray, Drew Tranquil, uh, some of these guys that. Um, have flashed in, in their first and in, in second years. Uh, what do you think the Chargers need to do to keep up and potentially beat the Chiefs in the AFC West one of these years? Maybe in uh, 2021. All right. So, like, I am I, I'm well known for having a, a long, um, you know, uh, at, at times uh, love hate relationship with the uh, San Diego and now Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Philip River, I have look. I mean, look over my left, my left shoulder. There's a a Philip Rivers Char Philip Rivers Charger doll that my wonderful wife AK got me uh, for for Christmas one year. But it was the, it was the year when um, the Chargers uh, beat Lamar Jackson and the Ravens in the playoffs. Um, like I like I. When Phil, I, when Phil did the first down, when he did yeah, the first yeah. down on the field. <laughs> yeah. And um, I look, I gotta be honest. Like I, I thought I was, I thought I was, I thought I was out. Um, you know, not, not out on the chargers, but I, you know, I thought, I thought, I, you know, I was, you know, try, we, we, we'd gone our separate ways. I, I might be back in, like, I, I might do something stupid, like pick the chargers and the Rams to play in the Super Bowl, um, in the, in, in Los Angeles in 2022. <laughs> like why, why wouldn't I do something dumb like that? I really think when you look at this defense that, I mean, you're spot on. You know, if Bosa and Derwin James are play 16 games each and you have Kenneth Murray take it, you know, he was good as rookie year. He takes a step forward. Nasir Adderley, underrated. Yeah. Uh, Chris Harris, criminally underrated in the pantheon of cornerbacks. Love Chris Harris. Um, Jerry Tillery. Let's not sleep on my boy, Justin Jones. In the interior there. Kind of also. That's another, another guy. Justin Jones is another guy who, who, I, I can see taking a big step in this defense. Yep. And, Man. and you, to, to mention Tillery, like Brandon Staley's pretty high on Jerry Tillery and his game and, and what he can do on the interior. So Jones and Tillery, and, and then Live All Joseph, too. The big shout out, shout out East Carolina University. That's Limbaugh right. Joseph. That's right. I mean, like Bosa, Limbaugh Joseph, Justin Jones, and Jerry Tillery. I mean, uh, Jerry Tillery. Like that's like that's a, a better defense. I think, Brand, I think. That's what intrigues me about Brandon Staley the most is like, I, I don't know that people really understand what a job he did with that Rams defense. I mean, he followed up Wade Phillips, like a, 
maybe the best defensive coordinator of all time, stepped in to fill his shoes, first-time defensive coordinator, and got the absolute apex performance from elite, like elite, like we're talking about like do, sort of, I know that it's not Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, but Joey Bosa, Derwin James, like it's the same sort of thing. You're talking yeah, about an exactly. elite, like one of a top five safety. Or top, I mean, maybe the, I mean, a top five defensive back in the league. If he's a hundred percent Derwin James, he was one of my three favorite players coming out of the draft. And uh, you know, one of the five best edge rushers in the league, if he's a hundred percent in Joey Bosa. So you put that in place and have a couple of guys take the leap forward and you got a, you know, a, a stud young linebacker Dude, this could be a, the best defensive football if everyone is healthy. And so I am fascinated by what Brandon Steele does from that perspective. And then, you know, can you just, I, I don't think, I don't think Justin Herbert can do what he did last year again, because it, I mean, like, really? Like you're going to just, is, is that just who he is? He sets the bar high, man. He, he threw 31 touchdowns to nine different receivers. You're elevating the play of everybody around you. It, it's going to be, I, I, listen, I, I, the kid's the real deal. But like it, what what was Oregon doing? Like I have I have I have I have I need answers from Mario Cristobal in Oregon as to what was going on in 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 wherever Oregon plays, whatever city they're in. Like what? Why? Wh where was that? Like well, you, well, you know the other thing is too man, is I I th we underestimated the fact that Joe Burrow had Justin Jefferson and, and Chase and Clyde edwards alaire and Tua had. Judy and Ruggs and, and these two guys that are coming That's out fair. now. Uh, Justin didn't have those weapons. So when you throw him into an offense with, with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Austin Eckler flying around and Hunter Henry last year, uh, you know, I, I, you saw what happened. And I think what's more fascinating, though, know, is that you got introduced to these new characters that we didn't know anything about. Guys, he was thrown to a training camp and Guyton and Williams and Donald Parham from the XFL, the six, eight tight end. I mean, Dude, he was, know, he was making, he was making names for guys. Do you, I mean, for, by the way, Adam Levitan and Evan Silva have established a run. I don't know if you read their stuff, but they, they do great daily, like great uh, DFS and regular fantasy stuff. They are the, they're the ultimate Donald Parham truthers. Like they run the Donald <laughs> Parham fan it. club. Yeah. So like, make sure and keep an eye out for them. The Chargers fans need to check that out. Cause they are Donald Parham truthers and they're not wrong about them. I, I think what's really interesting about Herbert this year. And, and this was my one, I, like I said, I wasn't high. I wasn't high enough on Justin Herbert, obviously coming out of the coming into the draft when he, when the chargers took him and like, I think this is what Anthony Lynn did really well. That, that doesn't get enough credit is that that system that he wanted to run with Tyrod Taylor. And it, it, that was perfect for Justin Herbert, right? Like get on the move, use his legs, let him throw downfield and attack that way. And, and I think Brandon Staley who just worked with Sean McVay, you know, is going to be smart enough to, to play to Justin Herbert's strength. So I don't think he's going to yeah. take some step, huge step back. I just think statistically there might be some, you know, regression because that's how football works a lot of times, but back to the original question, this Chargers team could be the chiefs this year. Why not? Like, why not? Why? I mean, yeah. the Chiefs, the Chiefs, you know, it's the the Chiefs. We thought the Chiefs were immortal and then they bled in the Super Bowl. Like we saw, you know, you, you can beat the Chiefs. They are not, they are not unstoppable. And you know, Herbert had him on the ropes. It, it is, it was, his, it was his first start, right? He wasn't even supposed to, he wasn't even starting until like seven minutes before the game. Yeah. So Second, why not? His, his first drive in the NFL, I think like seven plays, 69 yards, touchdown. <laughs> yeah, you're beating the Chiefs. You, they they led wire to wire in that game. So we did, we haven't we haven't really had our true Mahomes Herbert matchup, right? It, yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't supposed to be like that in Week Two. It wasn't that way in Week Seventeen because because Mahomes sat out. So at some point, I'm sure it's going to be on prime time on on Sunday night or Monday night football. Uh, but I, I'm just I'm excited for those matchups for the next decade. Mahomes Herbert. Because Char it's going to be fascinating. Chargers fans should be very, like, it sucks to be in a division with Mahomes because you feel like you're playing for second place a lot. But if I'm a Chargers fan, I feel like I've, I feel like this team has a, uh, a legitimate chance to challenge the Chiefs, not just on a, you know, weekly game by game basis, but a, on a season long basis. If Brandon Staley is who we think he is. And I mean, like, I think you see it from the, 
just the way he approaches it, like a sort of a defensive Sean McVay. And I'm not saying he has to be defensive Sean McVay, but just you can sort of see it in the way that he approaches his business, that he 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 does have a plan and he is focused on how this is going to work. And, and so I think if if Justin Herbert is who we saw last year or something in the cir- like vicinity of that, like th- this team has a chance to be really, really good. And I, I'm probably going to do something stupid to pick them to win the division and get made fun of for when the chiefs win it again next year. Well, last two things. First, I, I need a suggestion for the title of this podcast. I don't know. It, it's rolling mock. I don't know what it is, but, but you also have to promote pick six, your pick six pod when it is and what we can expect from you in the next few weeks leading up to the draft. Yeah, well, I mean, if you like a rambling wreck, we call it rambling, <laughs> rambling wreck, rambling, the rambling wreck mock. It's like all, all Georgia Tech players. If you like a rambling wreck of a podcast, then the Pick 6 podcast is for you. It's a daily uh, NFL podcast that I host on CBS Sports. And uh, like literally every day, uh, just we, we crank out new content. We did all we did uh, five quarterback profiles, uh, individual breakdowns, like 20 minute shows this past week where we looked at, you know, we, we had different guys come in, different draft analysts come in and, and break down each of those guys. Uh, and of course, we'll be doing recaps from every single round. And uh, yeah, I rambling rack. I don't know. Uh, the, it's, a, it's a rambling mock. It's, it's something like that. Yeah. It's mock, something it, like yeah, that. yeah, it's a, a, a very loose mock. I don't know. Something like that. It was, it was fun. <laughs> It was fun, dude. I hey, listen. I always love doing this with you. We were. I, I said, yeah, keep you to fifteen minutes. We went like an hour, man. Oh uh, yeah, if, yeah. You can't. They they wanted me. They wanted my podcast to be a thirty minute daily podcast. I was like, it's not going to work. Like, <laughs> so will, if we're going to go a little longer. Shut up. Right, right, right. right. That's right. <laughs> well, I love it, man. I, I my hope is that I get to see you out at SoFi Stadium at some point when we get back to normal. Maybe this year, or in the coming years, get you out here, Super Bowl something. Maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe we'll be there covering the Chargers in the Super Bowl, Chris. Love it, brother. Thanks so much. I did. Right,